Hello lovelies and welcome to this week's video. So by the title you may be thinking this is going to be something negative about self-care but it's not. So now it is self-care and the concept has been kind of stolen by essentially consumerism in a sense. Self-care is now seen as go just going and taking a nice bath, going and buying yourself something, maybe just taking a few minutes to read a book or just having a morning and evening, afternoon and eating healthy. And those are all great things and they all do help you de-stress from a really stressful long day. However, self-care is much more than that. Now, you might be wondering, well, what do you know? <laughs> like, you're just some person on YouTube, right? Well, I'm a holistic healer, and I was doing life coaching until I decided to go back to school for Master's in Counseling, which I am almost done with. So, this is really a subject that I really focus on, plus I myself have been very honest and open in past videos about my own issues, including PTSD, complex PTSD, and fibromyalgia. So self-care is a huge part of my daily life. And self-care is not something easy. It's, it's an obstacle. It's hard. It's difficult. Now, the things that I mentioned earlier that are seen in the mainstream and are discussed as self-care and self-love are still, don't get me wrong, self-care and an act of self-love. But in a sense, it's a superficial act. And that's superficial in the sense of, oh, it's all ego-based, it's all about the outside exterior or things of that nature. But it's more of a certain level that only takes care of the need at hand and de-stressing for that moment versus dealing with what's really going on inside and having an overall wellness within the oneself if that makes sense for people and I'm assuming it does so <laughs> It basically means that you are the survivor, you are the goddess, you are the god, you are the hero of your own life. You're no longer a victim and it's hard work. It's not just about relaxing, quick de-stressing. De it's rewiring what you have in your brain, in your soul, in your body overall. And in everyday life, it's doing things to a point where you may no longer need therapy if you are in therapy. And therapy can be a great part of self-care, which I'm going to get into as well. It's also no longer choosing a life that looks good on the outside, like aesthetic, over what really actually feels good to you inside and finding out who you are. It's a journey of discovering who you are, accepting all aspects, good and bad, about you and your past and everything about you and taking back that power, finding the real you, nurturing it, finding out how to grow that being, that person you really are inside and who you're meant to be, what your real goals are in life, not what you've been told, but your real goals and what is really important to you. Do you does your house need to be perfectly clean or do you just feel like it has to because you've been told that when there's other things that you could be focusing on, such as real in-depth self-care. So, I mentioned the idea of wellness. Wellness is essentially what everything I'm going to talk about is part of. And there will be videos in the future that talk 
on each aspect and I've already touched on a few of these things such as shadow work. I have like an introduction video of shadow work which there will be more. I've talked about mindfulness in videos. I've made empath videos of self-care. So some of these things have been discussed and you can go back and look through my past videos to find more information on some of these things and there will be more in-depth stuff in the future. But anyway, so there's some say there's six dimensions, some say there's eight. There's various arguments about the, how many dimensions there are of wellness. But for the purposes of this journey, I'm going to talk about the eight. So there's emotional, spiritual, intellectual, physical, environmental, financial, occupational, and social. Which all make perfect sense because when you're thinking about your life and what is stressing you out, a lot of the times we're trying to find a way to balance all of these things like relationships and friendships and how much time with like family and then our work and then are we financially stable? Are we doing what we want to do and what's best for us and our soul and our emotional stability and our physical capabilities and our physical health and they all intertwine and when we are at our peak of wellness and through self-care we are at a higher level of consciousness of ourselves and are capable of accomplishing and achieving and manifesting so much more within our lives so I'm going to start off with shadow work because that is something that I recently made a video on and I've been doing a lot of shadow work myself. Recently, um, I'm first going to bring up this shadow work journal by Jessica Cross and there's also meditations for each aspect and they're four to six minutes each and you can find the meditations themselves on YouTube actually. Uh, but the journal... I believe on her Gumroad website you can find it for free. Uh, again, that's Jessica Cross, the Shadow Work Journal. But if you want it in paper form, you can get it on Amazon for hella cheap. But it goes through and I find it to be very helpful in discovering and confronting biases, um, certain aspects of myself that I didn't want to confront. You also go into past life regret, uh, regression, you do some planting of seeds by meeting with your child, your inner child, so a part of you when you, you were a child. So for me, it was a five-year-old me that came and brought me seeds, and the seeds each represent some strength or thing that you were taught throughout your life that you lost, that helped develop who you are that were positive things and then it's supposed to grow so it's a very great tool to help somebody that has PTSD that somebody has an empath somebody with anxiety somebody that's bipolar schizophrenic any mental disorder any stress that you're dealing with just anybody in general you don't have to have anything wrong with you so to speak you could be essentially stable uh, but it's a great journey because no matter where we are at we all have things that we do not confront and that's kind of where the idea of projection comes from and if you want to learn more about shadow work and the basic idea of it I would recommend going and watching the video I made on it so I don't take up this whole video's time on just shadow work but I highly recommend for real intensive self-care I'm gonna call this intensive self-care versus superficial self-care so for intensive self-care I highly recommend starting off with this as a beginning stage journaling in general is very beneficial because it helps to get things out so if you're just doing like a daily journal of your day or journaling 
freestyle. So just letting free thoughts just go. And that's why if you're somebody that, that is in the mental health field or is a holistic healer or you are a client, journaling is always recommended no matter what the issue is because it helps you kind of get those thoughts that are in your consciousness, that are constantly there, out, and then things that you may not have thought were there, that are in your subconscious, start to come out, especially in free style, free form, whichever term you want to use, type of journaling. So journaling is a great thing. I highly recommend doing freestyle. I know that there are like certain new moon rituals that actually include doing that, like doing freestyle, um, journaling of writing down all the things that you don't like about yourself and then burning it and releasing it for the to start over and renew for the full cycle so that's an idea yoga is one of those things that is often discussed with this superficial self-care but it can help also with the intensive self-care it is recommended in the mental health field and the holistic health field. And there's a reason for it. Because yoga helps to calm anxiety. It helps to ground you. And while you're doing it, certain thoughts may come to you. And in order to actually do a lot of this more intensive stuff like journaling and shadow work and being introspective and looking inside yourself, you need to be grounded. Another thing that I forgot to mention about shadow work that I did mention in the video about shadow work but should be mentioned here as well is that there's also a short little exercise that you can do which is think about somebody and it's included in here too and we also do it in uh, school too and as counselors. Um, so think of somebody that you really don't like. Write down all the qualities you don't like about them and then think about things you don't like about yourself and start to compare and then start to look at the list that you made of that person, right, that you don't like and really be honest with yourself. Do you have any of those qualities or have you ever had any of those qualities and behaved like that? Because a lot of the time we don't like people either because there is some level of envy or there is some level of irritation with their behavior because we may have done that or we may want to be loud and speak out about things and maybe that's why we find these people annoying or there's so many different things but it does help you on that road to being able to figure out who you are and accept it and figure out your biases. Meditation in general, it doesn't have to be just chat work meditation but I think vision quest meditations are great um there's a lot of self-esteem um a lot of confidence ones there are ones just for self-care there are ones just meeting your inner child just even doing meditation that's not guided where you just let your thoughts kind of go and you go to a certain place and you start to think about things and maybe talk to a guide it's all great. Um, chakra rebalancing, working on your chakras, getting Reiki. Those are all great things because then you can kind of see where your body is at in alignment in the spiritual sense to be able to help you figure out where you are at in the mental and the physical as well. And again, therapy can be beneficial and I said I was going to mention something about the stigma. So there's a stigma around mental health that as somebody that's about to become a counselor, I really am focused on trying to get rid of. Um, I understand the stigma as somebody that's been in and out of treatment and all that, but a big benefit that's happening right now, at least in counseling, therapy, and psychology, besides uh, the big impact of multiculturalism and being taught about that, is 
the intertwinedness, I don't know, that's not really a word, of holistic things being added into um, various therapeutic techniques. A lot of Eastern ideas, um, native views and ideas of healing, um, pagan, all that kind of stuff is really getting rooted in. When you look at CBT, DBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, you will see a lot of things that, as pagans, New Age, Buddhists, all that kind of stuff, um, if you really look at it, it's essentially exactly what we talk about doing uh, in our own self-care or our own spiritual development, but they just use different terms. I understand the stigma because of the pill pushing, but that's psychiatry, not counseling therapy or psychology. In that realm, in that world, wellness and mindfulness and even discussions of chakras and Reiki and all that kind of stuff is really starting to boom, as well as peer counseling where it's somebody that's gone through similar things understands that every person's experience is different and unique and what is going to work for them is different and unique. That is very beneficial because a lot of people don't want to go into treatment because they have this stereotype that the counselor, the psychologist, what have you, is going to be judging you and is a different class than you or won't accept you because you know you're into holistic medicine or you're a new age and stuff but the fact of the matter is for the past decade or two it's really changed and that they I mean let's I'll give you an example there are trauma groups even in the small town that I live in where they do a meditation every group um there and that's at a Christian place for crying out loud so that's just a stigma that I wanted to discuss to get rid of because there's no shame in going to therapy even if you don't have an actual diagnosis or something that can be diagnosed um, and just because you go to therapy does not mean that you have to go to a psychiatrist if they want to refer you to one for medication. If you're against the pills and the pharmaceutical industry, you can say, I just want to work on things that you can help me with that are in a more holistic thing. And you can always search out therapists and counselors that are like myself who have a holistic background who are we're going to be working in that field. I know my mom was a psych nurse and her and all her coworkers and they worked at the human services department all were like doing Reiki and stuff like that. So it's not the way it was like 30, 40 years ago. Okay. Um, so back to other things that you can do on your own. Practicing gratitude helps. It helps change your brain processes and your pathology and it also changes your vibration and what you're putting out to the universe and your overall mental and physical well-being and spiritual well-being so other things that you need to ex know is that you need to find and accept and know your worth self-care is important to maintain healthy relationships with yourself and the world around you it helps to produce positive feelings and boost confidence and self-esteem. And that helps with every aspect of that wellness, that, uh, all the aspects of wellness that I talked about before. Um, you also have to have a healthy work balance. And I think that's where that superficial that I talked about uh, self-care is often discussed is because people are working a lot and the economy sucks and so when they get home they just want to relax they just want to have a glass of wine for them they just want to go and take a bath with that glass of wine with some candles lit and read a book and there's nothing wrong with that like I said that is an important part of it 
but it's not all that self-care is because self-care is really having to dig in and deal with your quote unquote demons and confront them, accept them and take them in. Um, so if you don't have a healthy work balance, anxiety, depression, extreme stress, and even having some breakdowns can happen. A lot of us, especially the people that I know that watch my videos, have problems with creating boundaries because we're very empathetic, we're very sensitive and caring to the needs of others. And when you're working, you tend to then be somebody that wants to please everybody. You end up being a perfectionist maybe, you overwork, you spread yourself too thin. I know I do that. I spread myself way too thin. I take on way too many things. And as people, we need to learn how to say no. We need to create boundaries. We also need to learn stress management. More than just that superficial self-care of, okay, I'm going to take a relaxing bath. And sure, for some people, that might be the only amount of time that they have is to take a nice little bath. But there are things that you can do, which I'll get into a different video later on, because this is already getting long, <laughs> that you can do in the if you only have like 10 to 15 minutes a day to kind of focus on your self-care while you're even taking that bath to think about and you can evaluate yourself. You can do various self-care and therapeutic things to, your, to for yourself while in the tub. So you can kind of meld the two if you have short period. So stress management is extremely important. Making sure that you, I hate having to make lists or having to schedule and everything being like that, but it does help a lot with stress management, especially if you are doing intensive self-care work where you I'm not going to deny you are going to be probably a little more emotional, a little more on edge for part of that period because it's just like actual therapy if you're not going to go and do that. You're doing therapy on yourself. Like you can go and find DBT and CBT worksheets online yourself and see if that will help you um, with your self-care and with the discovery of yourself along with shadow work or other things like that. Um, but yeah, we have to find a way to balance our responsibilities in every aspect of our lives while also finding out ourselves because we are never going to have true full wellness and happiness if we don't know who we are, if we don't accept every aspect of ourselves. And things are just going to keep happening and repeating and cycling until we accept who we are and then try not fix it it's not about fixing it's about embracing and bringing those things that may be seen as negative into the positives and finding a way to make them work and become a more empowered overall being um going for a run again is usually listed as what i would have called the superficial but you can do a lot of thinking and a lot of self-actualization while running or going out in nature or gardening or doing those type of things. You can do a lot of that. Like, you have a lot of time to just think. And that can help you for later on if you want to journal or if you want to do just a recording of a vlog of yourself talking if you don't want to write that you don't post anywhere but you just kind of keep as your own diary. Also, finally, choose who you want to spend your time with. Cut out toxic people. And I talk about this in like all my empath videos, all of my previous self-care type videos and boundary stuff. But getting rid of toxic people, it's very hard. Change is difficult. I'm not going to deny that. Change is an extremely difficult thing for all of us. But it's a good thing especially when we want to better ourselves and our overall wellness. So 
Cut out toxic people, cut out toxic behaviors, thoughts, and self-defeating behaviors and thoughts that you might have. Confront those self-defeating thoughts and behaviors. Think try and think why am I having these thoughts why do I say this to myself and every time that you have one of those thoughts try and replace it with something positive which can be very difficult but it's worth it so for example oh I can't believe I'm still doing these YouTube videos it's not like anybody cares I can replace that with you know even if it just helps one person that's great you know, if we constantly are having these self-defeating, toxic thoughts and behaviors, we get into a cycle and we start to dwell and then we just become this ball of negativity in which it doesn't even matter if there's toxic people or a toxic environment in which we're around. We ourselves have become that toxic person and that toxic environment. And not many of us want to admit when we have become the toxic being. Uh, eating healthy, I know I mentioned, is superficial, but it also is not. It's all about the way that you do it and the reason behind doing it. Because certain foods do affect your moods. They can affect your nervous system, your body, your muscle pains, your arthritis, any of that kind of stuff. So looking up foods that are beneficial for whatever issue you might be having at the time. So like if you have depression, what kind of foods are going to help you get out of that depression? Um, it's really amazing all the natural things that we can do without medications to fix these issues. Uh, while we're going through this that is part of self-care and it also is great for the soul certain foods just kind of clog you and they clog your chakras and they're just overall bad for you I'm not going to get into my eating habits and what my belief systems are in there I did have a little comment thread with somebody on a, I think my last video if you're interested but it does help the overall, and I have been so much better since I went back to that lifestyle. Again, learn to say no and no boundaries and learn to enforce them. Stop overthinking and reconstruct your thoughts again, which is basic cognitive behavioral therapy, which is also part of a lot of pagan belief systems, New Age, Buddhist type belief systems as well. Get rid of the negative, replace it with the positive, basic. Um, and then finally, something that's very basic, but very difficult for people, is looking in the mirror, and I've said this in probably like five, at least videos, five at least, um, looking in the mirror and saying five to ten good things about you every day. As long as, or not as long, as well as the gratitude list. So even if you don't want to do gratitude daily, you can do it on the new moon and the full moon. Like, I am grateful for this. I am grateful, etc. So that's basically it. So to summarize, I, in my opinion, I group them as superficial self-care and self-love and intensive self-care and self-love I know that a lot of people recently have been having big problems with the what I've listed as self are uh, superficial but I still think that they are part of it it's just you need to do the more intensive stuff to actually be become a better person and be your true self and to better your soul, your mind, your physical body and every other aspect of the wellness cycle. So that's all. Um, thank you for watching another very long video. I tried to talk a little slower in this one so people can grasp every bit of information. Again, there will be future videos that talk more in depth about each aspect and I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on 
shadow work themselves that's uh, itself excuse me um so look forward to that thank you all for watching if you have not yet please subscribe press the bell button for notifications please like leave a comment about things that you do that help you to discover accept find yourself in your biases and maybe things that you didn't want to confront and how you deal with it and maybe some of the superficial things that you do on a daily basis just to get by because that's what the superficial the superficial self care is about it's just to survive while the intensive self care is to help you be able to once you're done working through the difficult part be able to live so that's all i love you all and hopefully i'll have a video next week it's final season so sorry <laughs> so yeah i love you all and have a great week and a great new moon